Our key message is that people who have fallen and aren't injured are best helped by their friends, their relatives, their neighbours, the people who are with them when they fall. Here at St John Ambulance, we train a quarter of a million people a year in first aid. So why can't we train a quarter of a million people in how to help people in their community who have a non-injury fall? Well, St John Ambulance, we're delighted to be here with colleagues from across the NHS and social care sectors, particularly interested in falls and how we can uh, harness the support of communities to people within their community who've fallen. Um, you'll see next to me here one of our community lifting cushions. We really believe that through education uh, into communities we can take uh, steps to make sure that people who have fallen and aren't injured are assisted first by their community, by their relatives, their neighbours, their friends, but to release uh, NHS ambulance resources, less hospital admissions, um, and uh, we're here today talking to leaders from across the systems about how we might make that work. Okay, so to come to show you the Manga Eagle, how we can utilise it to be able to lift people that have had a fall. It is a versatile, flexible piece of equipment which does allow us to lift the multitude of ways. How it allows us to be able to lift anybody, anywhere, in any which way we want. Very simple, easy controls, got four buttons, one, two, three and four. And again, it allows you to have that versatility to lift them obviously as they want. I'll just go through now quickly on how we can lift somebody. We've obviously got somebody onto the cushion already and we'll just have to go through the processes. So if I start off with cushion number one, as you can see, it allowed me to be able to lift somebody, get them into an appropriate seating position, and I can be there just as that bit of support and guidance as we start to come up. Ideally, we'll lift them to about two or three pillar heights worth. Okay, and I can pause it there. From here, we can move on to the next section. We go on to cushion number two. Some of the aspects you can see about the cushion itself, it has got a full back, neck and head support. There's no risks of entrapment. So somebody will can relax, they can put their arms to the side. Where it envelops around somebody, it does actually um, create a safe and controlled lift. Even if there is anybody with any form of involuntary movement at all, it does obviously again protect them and keep them nice and safe and secure as they lift. Keep on going with the cushions as well. You can never ever over inflate the cushion. So again, you would just operate it until required. Move it on up. Again, you can be flexible and have it works. We can flat lift somebody as well. And once number two is complete, I'll go on to the next section, which will be number three. And again, if you can see the options, in terms of obviously what I need to be able to do, normally I can be here at the front of the patient being at an eyesight, so I do have obviously the eyes on them, ensuring there's no risk, there's obviously no danger, there's no change in obviously the way they are. Are we all comfortable there, Adam? Very good. Fantastic. And then once number three is complete, I will continue on to the backrest to get somebody up into that elevated and seated position. Again, I can use this in a monitor, obviously in a variety of settings. I can bring it up, pause, check we're all okay and obviously carry on for the next steps. Now once we're obviously we're complete on this section here, we're up to one, cushions one, two and three. They can sit there, you can do further observations, further assessments if required, and you do still have the option to be able to go up to cushion number four to give them that additional height to come to the stand where required. Again, you've got good access to transfer from side to side, and obviously they just a straight transfer off the cushion.